evening, everyone, um, and welcome to the information session for Ohio University's virtual um, information session on the Educational Public Policy Leadership Certificate Program. Um, delighted to see you all here. Um, this is the second session that we've done virtually. Um, I'm Dwan Robinson, um, Pro Program Coordinator for the uh, Education Public Policy Leadership Certificate, also known as EPPLC. Um, for today's session, we will be um, networking, we'll learn, we'll connect, and we will imagine. Um, we will network and meet uh, the EPPLC leadership team, the faculty, hear a little bit about them. Um, we'll learn a little bit, gain insights into the program, um, hear snippets of the experience uh, that our members had um, with the residency, the capstone residency experience in Washington, D.C. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll connect. Um, we'll hear some testimonials from several EPPLC alums from cohort one. Um, and then we'll imagine, we'll ima let you imagine and understand how the EPPLC can be really a stepping stone um, to lifelong learning, to um, academic pursuits, to career um, and professional development, as well as personal development. So welcome again. I um, look forward to, to hearing from, from all of you uh, later on. Um, without further ado, though, I'd like to spend some time and introduce you to the faculty members um, who are on the call for um, various uh, components of the Ed Policy Leadership Certificate Program. Again, as I said, I'm Dewan Robinson, faculty member in educational leadership. Um, and chair of the Department of Educational Studies, um, also the program coordinator for the EPPLC program, and am blessed to have several colleagues who participate in the program with me as faculty members. And so I'm going to invite Dr. Linda Trotman to share a little bit about her um, and introduce herself to you. Good day, everyone. I'm Dr. Linda Trotman. I'm an associate professor of political science. I've taught at OU since 2005. My major areas of specialization include legislative politics and public policy. I have also engaged in advocacy on Capitol Hill over the past four years in collaboration with my professional affiliation in the Consortium of Social Science Association. I teach two courses in the EPPLC program. The first one is Legal Issues in Education. It is an investigation into the evolution of education law by considering key court cases that have defined and shaped the dynamics and parameters of public education and higher education. Uh, students analyze a timeline. Um, there are also um, instances where they apply theoretical concepts, legal concepts, actually to case law. And we get into some of the key issues such as the contemporary debates around free speech, as well as um, social justice uh, issues. So that's the first uh, course, and it's really um, complementary to the second course where it's an effort to fuse theory with practice. And so in the second course, which is policy perspectives in education, there are several themes, including agenda setting, policy development, policy change, reform, advocacy. And there are different um, perspectives that are drawn upon understanding uh, reform in education. Most principally, we look at macro movements um, from the perspective of grassroots initiatives and activism. And then we progressively move to um, analyzing educational policy um, post the No Child Left Behind Act and essentially analyzing the scope of the national government versus the states. And what I like to say is that at the end of that section of the course, we're really trying to understand what kinds of systemic positive 
reforms have been put forth in education. Um, so I think that you will enjoy the um, program. Um, it's a really enriching experience. And I also had the opportunity to attend the DC residency last fall. It was a very in intriguing, very interesting experience. And I think one of the mo most gratifying uh, experience of the, well, it was a gratifying experience, but one of the things that I thought was really beneficial is to see students actually implement what they learn in theory into practice. And so it was very impressive to see the first cohort actually integrate knowledge from the course when they interacted with their congressional staff and delegation. Um, I think that this program is very valuable as it relates to career goals and especially those who have an interest in educational policy and also want to experience the connection of policy, politics, and engaging in advocacy on Capitol Hill. So welcome. Thank you, Dr. Trotman. And so um, in addition to myself and Dr. Trotman, um, Dr. Marsha Lewis, who is not with us this evening, is a faculty member in the program. Um, she is the associate professor in the Voinovich School of Leadership and Public Affairs. She's also senior associate dean um, there at the Voinovich School. Um, Dr. Lewis teaches leadership in education policy, um, which is an MPA course. Um, and she also teaches um, uh, various other um, components of the residency experience that Dr. Trotman uh, shared with you that we will be talking about later in the session. Um, in addition to Dr. Lewis and Dr. Trotman, Dr. J Jason Jolly, also from the Voinovich School of Leadership and Public Affairs, is a professor um, in the program. He is professor of rural economic development. He's also the MPA director um, and so is very much involved with um, cohorts of students who take courses in leadership and public affairs at Ohio University. Um, they are both not able to be with us this evening, um, but look forward to uh, engaging with the cohort and with the, the students. Um, Dr. Jolly in particular teaches the education policy analysis course, um, which um, is offered toward the end of the series uh, right before the residency and takes students through uh, the policy analysis um, process uh, for the policy. Additional members of our um, EPPLC uh, team, if you if we can turn to the next slide, um, include um, Tasha Attaway, uh, Patrick Mose, Lisa Dale, Sashin Phillips, and Anna K. Rowe. And I'm going to ask um, each of them just to say hello to you and to share with you uh, what their roles and responsibilities might be um, with the project. Um, Tasha, if you would start off for me, thanks. Sure. Um, as Dr. Robinson said, I'm Tasha Attaway, and my title is rather long. It is Digital Recruiting and Retention Manager for the Patton College of Education. So I work with a lot of programs, but the EPPLC is really special to me. Um, I am a two-time Ohio alumnus, and one of the things that really strikes me about this program, echoing what Dr. Troutman said, is the residency experience is genuinely amazing. And I know that some of our alums, our um, cohort one alumni will talk about that as well. But what I do with the program is I provide support. I do marketing. I um, provide retention report support and uh, I do a lot of recruiting. So if there is anything that I can do to be of assistance as you make your decisions about what you're going to do, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, you guys have my contact information from the email that I sent when you registered, and I would love to work with you further. Thank you, Tasha. Is Lisa Dale with us? Yes, I am. I'm actually right here. Excellent. Uh, 
nice to have everybody join us tonight on this webinar. Um, as you can see, I'm the Assistant Director of Online and Outreach Programs, and um, I work with all of our online programs right now that uh, we have across the Patton College. This one I'm very excited about being able to do a second cohort on, and um, that residency is very exciting that we'll get to um, we'll, we'll get to set up for next uh, summer. And um, what I do is usually help the students with any kind of issues they have. Um, if there's any questions about um, payment plans or how to register, um, how to access Blackboard, if they're having issues that way. Uh, I try to help with a lot of those administrative tasks so that um, you have somebody that you can go to uh, since you're at a distance and can get the help that you need um, so that the technology is not an issue and other administrative things are not an issue and you can just enjoy your program and learn a lot from um, these highly qualified faculty that we have. Excellent. So Lisa is a, the point person for helping people really navigate our online program um, and helping troubleshoot numerous problems. So um, she's a problem solver and we're delighted to have her join us. Um, the next person I'm going to ask to share a little bit about what they're involved with is Sasheen Phillips. Uh, I think Sasheen is with us. Yes, thank you. Good evening, everyone. As shared, my name is Sasheen Phillips. I am a fourth year doctoral candidate at Ohio University, and I support the EPPLC program uh, as an assistant and arm to Dr. Robinson in the implementation of the program, working directly with the students once you have been accepted and help you navigate your coursework and assist you in support as you prepare to develop your research and to prepare for the residency. This is a, an, an instrumental program for many people to work with. I worked at the State Department for uh, 13 years and educational policy is truly vital as you're looking at advancing the work in, in your different fields. So welcome, we look forward to seeing you. Thank you, Sasheen. Anna K. Rowe, please, please join us and introduce yourself. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Anna K. Rowe. I'm entering my third year of the Higher Education and Student Affairs doctoral program at Ohio University. And my role in the EPPLC program, I support Dr. Robinson and Tasha um, quite significantly with the recruitment, uh, marketing, social media um, to ensure that we're able to recruit students and also provide them with resources so that they can do very well throughout the program. So if you are a prospective student and you need resources and support, feel free to reach out to me if you'd like to be part of our network or group on Teams sharing resources and materials related to education public policy. I'd be happy to pass those resources on to you. And if you're an alumni um, and would like to have materials related to your policy passions, I'm also willing and available to curate those information to share those resources with you so that you can have that ongoing professional development. So this is a remarkable program. I always tell Dr. Robinson as a doctoral student, I wish I could take the courses myself because the material is really robust and the program is really, really impactful. So this is a great community to be part of and I look forward to working with you all much more. Wonderful. Thanks so much for that overview. Um, and so we're going to move to the next slide um, and hear from um, some of the most important people here on the call, and that is members of our EPPLC alums, alumni group um, from cohort one. Um, we have uh, two that have joined us and are, are gracious to, enough to share some time um, talking about their experience. And so um, without further ado, I'm going to ask Tom Stevenson to uh, introduce himself and share a little bit about his experience. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm sorry I'm at home tonight and the dogs have decided to make a little visit right at that moment. So, well, I hope you have, um, I hope you have your, uh, your attitude and your bootstraps and your uh, willingness to fully embrace an opportunity to learn at a completely different level. I was blown away by the opportunity that presented itself in Washington, DC. And I appreciate the opportunity um, and that Dr. Troutman shared that as an experiential learner, which is what I am, I put, had a great opportunity to put what was my policy uh, focus into action. And so 
I'm the assistant professor of instruction at the Patton College, and my focus really is around food waste. Uh, I'm a chef by trade and a 30-year practitioner, and I could really see an opportunity in reference to educational policy and the National School Lunch Program. And I'm a faculty member who likes to be much more proactive rather than reactive. And every day we can hear in the news um, about what happened to kids uh, in uh, faculty and their concerns around kids um, when students weren't in the school systems and what happened in reference to nourishment. And so my hope and goal as a, as a practitioner and as an educational policy advocate is to use my learnings from this program in order to help drive support for a national school lunch program that works. Um, I think we all deserve help and nourishment. And so this program helped me learn how to connect with stakeholders. It, it taught me how to nudge people in the right direction. It taught me how we got to the situation that we're in currently with the policy. And it also enlightened me as to the ways that both sides of the aisle work together in order to help create policy change. And thankfully, my experience in Washington, D.C. was very positive in a way that it showed me that both sides of the aisle really want to do what's best for our citizens and best for our students. And it allowed me to connect with them in a way that helped give me authority. Um, I remember when um, all of the leaders said to me at one point in time, you're an expert in your respective areas and we need to hear from you. And so it's encouraged me to write letters. It's encouraged me to add my voice to the narrative. It's encouraged me to look for opportunities to connect with other people who are interested in my same policy agenda. And it's given me faculty that I feel comfortable with to go back and have conversations with. It was a lifelong experience in Washington, D.C. It was more than I could have ever imagined, and it's allowed me to have a more solid foundation and to use an educated voice to speak about a policy issue that I'm really, really passionate about. Excellent. Thank you so much, um, Tom, for sharing your perspective. Um, we also have another uh, alum here from the program from cohort one with us, um, Kelly Davidson. If you would introduce yourself and share your experiences, that would be great. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Kelly Davidson. I was in cohort number one and it was a positively challenging experience. Um, that's the best way I can put it. Um, I was, I think all of us were stretched in ways that we didn't know we could stretch. Um, our ways of thinking were stretched, um, just finding the information about how things work behind the scenes was so incredibly enlightening. Um, I am an, an administrator at Ohio University in the Patton College of Education, and so I'm in the higher ed part of things or side of things, but I was really interested in looking at financial literacy rates of K, to, K through 12 students and just coming into contact with tons of college students who have no sense of financial responsibility. Um, and so that was, that was what I studied um, for the final project and had an opportunity to present my findings to Representative Steve Stivers, and um, he was so in, so engrossed and engaged in what I was talking about that he happened to give me the local representative, the, the local Ohio representative's cell phone number to contact him to set up a meeting to talk more about some things that could be done um, to... I guess, push for financial literacy with our K through 12 students. So it was wonderful. The residency in DC was amazing. Um, we literally walked in the footsteps of our congressional and Senate representatives. So we were all over DC sitting in on meetings, um, mixing and mingling and networking, and it was life changing. So if you're thinking about it, just do it. It's it's good. Just do it. Thank you so much, Kelly. I appreciate 
um, you uh, sharing that. Um, both Tom and Kelly, as they indicated, were um, very much engaged in their coursework. Um, and the program emphasizes um, an opportunity for students to explore their passion, their issue of passion, and to workshop those issues from the beginning of the program all the way to the end. And so um, as soon as you enter the program, typically you have issue areas that you're interested in. Uh, we begin from day one actually doing learning activities and understanding policy in the context of the topics and the issues that you um, have a passion for. Um, and then we take that all the way through to the experience in Washington, D.C., as uh, both Tom, Kelly, and Dr. Trotman uh, alluded to, where um, you have an opportunity to interface with lawmakers and decision makers in the policy arena around those topics, as well as other uh, topics of interest. And so, um, Next, I'm going to um, walk you through a little bit more about the Education Public Policy Leadership Certificate Program. Um, we'll talk a little bit about um, the expectations. Um, we'll cover a little more about course outlines and the courses that are offered. Um, talk about the um, Washington, D.C. residency, if you've, as you've heard about already. Um, and share some um, actual um, photos from that experience. Um, and then you've also, you've already heard uh, the alumni testimonies, um, which many of our students have stories to tell about their experiences and how enriching it was. Um, but I do wanna just in a nutshell, give you a little more information about uh, the program in general and give you some, a bit of an overview um, the EPPLC is a, a 12 credit program. Um, it's an eight course program. So each course is either one to two, one to two credit hours. Um, and the courses um, span from um, this year from June unt until, sorry, from July until next June. Uh, so it's a one year offering. Um, the experience is completely online, except for the three and a half day um, capstone residency that occurs at the end of the program, and it's the culminating experience of the certificate program. Um, we have four faculty members um, who are engaged with the policy program from time to time. Um, there will be um, visiting presenters. Um, to plug into some of your um, issue areas and your issues of passion. Um, we have created a program that we would want to take ourselves, as many uh, individuals on the call have said, uh, they would love to avail themselves of the policy courses and the experiences. Uh, but we really do try to make sure that there's a unique blend of theory and practice. Um, in terms of policy advocacy and policy changes um, and reforms that individuals endeavor to be engaged in. Um, so we want this to be a very user-friendly and a very usable uh, experience for our participants uh, so that you can hit the ground running um, as soon as you're done with a course in terms of turning some of those experiences into um, actual action that you will take in terms of helping to have a voice um, and be engaged in policy and be engaged in advocacy and connecting and plugging in with organizations and other individuals who seek to make policy um, a change and you know seek, seek, seek to engage and influence policy uh, opportunities. Um, in particular, I want to share a little bit about you, about the course with you, the courses that we have, and uh, about the course outline. Um, if you can slide to the next, go to the next slide. Um, as Dr. Trotman shared earlier, um, she teaches two courses in the um, lineup of courses. Um, the first course is the foundational awareness of public education, public policy. Um, it's the course that I teach. 
um, and we specifically give um, our participants and our students an overview of what the education public policy process looks like, uh, both from the federal level and the state level. Um, but we do it through the lens of particular policies that we are all familiar with or particular issue areas that we're all familiar with. And so um, someone mentioned No Child Left Behind earlier. Um, we look at you know Every Student Succeeds Act. We look at the Higher Education Acts. We uh, consider issues like um, uh, Tom Stevenson shared with you food insecurity. We look at uh, issues in terms of um, higher education and access and equity. Uh, we talk to um, various individuals and share information about um, policy form formation and policy development and um, how issues and policy issues um, become social issues and reach the policy agenda through some um, catalyst um, of an event that happens in society, um, how stakeholders and coalitions and um, individuals can be involved in that process for helping policy reach the agenda. Um, and so those are some of the things we cover in the foundational awareness of education. Um, another course that I have been engaged with is the Issues, Institutions, and Stakeholders course, where we talk about key issues that have um, been um, instrumental in education in terms of educational movements. Um, we look at um, the institutions that are involved in policymaking, um, and then we talk about the stakeholders. Um, and we're all stakeholders in the policy process. And so uh, the program really is designed to help individuals determine where they fit in, um, how they can have a voice, how they can actually be engaged and help to shape policy. Uh, and so that's what the Issues, Institutions, and Stakeholders course is primarily about. Um, Dr. Marsha Lewis teaches the MPA 6000, which is leadership in education policy. Um, she uses a number of case studies of um, education policy issues uh, that have, have happened in um, the field of public policy over the years. Um, it's a very practical course. Um, students have an opportunity to actually walk through cases and problem solve in that particular course. Um, Dr. Linda Trotman shared her course on legal issues in education. Um, she also shared a little bit about policy perspectives in education. Um, and then there's Dr. Jason Jolly's course on education policy analysis, um, where he actually sends you through the process of how do you analyze a policy or how is policy analyzed. Um, and how we can be engaged in um, that whole experience. Um, the policy implementation and evaluation course is somewhat of a cap capstone on the policy process. It talks about how what happens during policy implementation. Uh, the fun part about that course is how um, practitioners um, can really shape the implementation process because as policy comes down, uh, to our institutions and our schools, uh, we have an opportunity to um, either take policy at, on its face, um, to shape policy a bit as we implement it, um, or to offer some resistance to it. And so um, it's really kind of the capstone piece of the policy process. Um, and then we spend a little time looking at policies and looking at how one might evaluate policy effectiveness um, so that we can um, have an eye toward policies that may need changing um, and policy um, strategies uh, that we might be able to employ in terms of um, changing them. Um, finally, the capstone experience is the, is the uh, education public policy practicum and residency. Um, and during that time, students spend some time um, preparing artifacts uh, for their experience in Washington, DC. Um, they prepare um, policy position 
um, pieces and, you know, elevator speeches and prepare to go and actually interface with policymakers and their, their staff members. Um, they work on letters to the editor. Um, we spend some time looking at um, our policy issues and preparing um, a mini presentation and poster presentation, both for those cohort members that we join in Washington, but also for others who may be interested in the topics. Um, and so we spend a lot of time during the capstone practicum talking about artifacts that might be usable pieces for us as we go out in to a society and to our communities and to our organizations and actually roll out various parts and pieces of um, our policy knowledge in terms of advocacy. Um, and that is a very, very enriching experience um, because we get to see policy in action. Uh, we get to get feedback. Um, we actually talk to not only people on Capitol Hill, but other policy stakeholders who are engaged in policymaking and who influence policymaking like think tank um, participants and uh, individuals with foundations and research organizations and so forth. So that's a little bit of an overview about our courses um, and we are going to go to uh, the next few slides and give you a little more information about our residency. Um, and so here's our team um, that attended the residency last year. Um, we were also um, very involved with networking with um, congressional staff members. Um, we have um, Representative Steve Stivers, um, legislative aide, uh, Nick Bush was there and participated and shared information with us. Um, Chanya Davis, who's from uh, Representative Joyce Beatty's office. Um, and then Leah Hill, who um, interfaced with us, she's from um, Senator Sherrod Brown's office. Um, and so it, it depends on, um, you know, the, the timing of our, our meetings, who we get to in, engage with and interface with. Uh, but many of our students had an opportunity to actually talk to congressional representatives. And so you can see that um, from this next slide. Um, in the upper right corner, um, Kathleen Blackwell are, is a student who was in the cohort one from Virginia, um, and she had an opportunity to uh, interface with Representative McEachin um, from her state. Um, and so she was thrilled because she actually had an opportunity to pitch her, her policy issue um, before him and before one of his staff members. Um, in the left-hand corner is a picture of some of the Ohio participants along with uh, Representative Steve Stivers, who actually represents uh, the area where Ohio University is located and the you know, Athens area. Um, Dr. S uh, Representative Stivers, as uh, Tom Stevenson shared and also uh, Kelly Davidson shared, was very much engaged in their policy work um, and their policy issues um, and was very hands-on in terms of helping to facilitate um, some ideas for them. And so that was a very robust experience. Um, in the lower left corner, the, um, uh, you see again Kathleen Blackwell and Dr. Troutman um, in visiting one of the uh, congressional offices as well. Um, in the middle there is Senator, former Senator Trent Lott from Mississippi. Um, he greeted us and welcomed us uh, during one of our sessions um, before we went to Capitol Hill. It was a session the day before where we heard from um, stakeholders and policymakers and decision makers um, and individuals invo involved in the policy sphere. And so he is a... Um, uh, partner with a lobbying firm where we held some of our meetings um, and was gracious enough to come in and share his insights with us and to welcome us to the group. So that's him in the middle. Um, and then also on the uh, far right corner um, with Dr. Jason Jolly. Uh, so a real highlight 
um, of our experience uh, all the way through. Um, we had some very good experiences during the re residency. And so I think we have some more pictures here for you. Um, in the upper left corner, Dr. Marsha Lewis, Dr. Jason Jolly, and um, a graduate of the Voinovich School of Leadership and Public Affairs, who's now um, actually engaged in um, policy and advocacy work in the Washington, D.C. area. Um, our own Dean of the College of Education, Dean Renee Middleton, um, is in that picture. She's also in the middle picture there. Um, she urged us to all get into good trouble um, as we seek to advocate for policies and change policies that need um, to be uh, revised or, or refined. Um, a couple of our cohort members on the left, sorry, on the right, um, Tom Stevenson there with um, two of our participants from cohort one. Um, moving on down to the lower right is um, Kathleen Blackwell again with Dr. Trotman um, really talking about some of the policy issues um, that Kathleen had talked about. And then in the um, lower left corner, again, some more individuals from Ohio, including uh, superintendent from North Olmstead, uh, Michael Zalar in the bottom corner there. So if we could go to the next slide, that would be great. Um, as you can see, we had a number of working sessions. The, the, they weren't all meetings on Capitol Hill, but we had some working sessions um, where people were hearing from, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of policy experts um, and advocacy experts. Um, and so we spent some very intimate time. It was a, a, a real learning experience hearing from various and sundry people who spent quite a bit of time with us, um, everyone from uh, people from the executive branch um, to um, research organizations and lobbying organizations and, and think tanks and so forth. Um, a lot of our participants um, had the chance also to um, go to some hearings on Capitol Hill. And so in the upper left corner is um, one of the hearings that was happening around um, learning experiences in K-12 education. Um, and then, as you can see in the bottom right corner, um, we had several sessions where our um, students shared their poster presentations and had an opportunity um, to uh, basically share their um, research and their learning um, as a result of workshopping those issues and topics throughout the program. So that's a little bit of a nutshell for of the experience. Again, some additional um, um, in, informal networking opportunities. Um, the panelists from the different uh, congressional offices um, in the upper top corner, um, and then um, a picture that we um, really like and use quite a bit um, to promote our program um, in the bottom right, where our cohort was actually off to the Capitol to various meetings, and they had their roller skates on going from, from office building to office building up on Capitol Hill. Um, so we will move to the next slide, um, and this is the final um, group again. Um, and so I'm going to uh, stop um, for a moment and open the floor up for questions, um, concerns, any answers that other people may have, um, share some frequently ask, asked questions and topics with you. Um, so um, you may have some questions about the benefits of the program or the course sequencing. Our courses are um, offered um, sequentially about every five or six weeks, five to seven weeks. Um, we tried to do something um, a little differently this year um, where there's a bit of a break, maybe a week or two in between each course uh, to enable our participants to catch their breath. Um, program cost information is available on our website. Um, the um, program costs about um, $600 per credit and I know that um, individuals who are affiliated with Ohio University certainly can avail themselves of tuition uh, remission arrangements. 
um, and many of you who are listening also have the opportunity to do some uh, tuition reimbursement um, options from your uh, workplace. Um, we do have financial aid office that will assist you in identifying um, potential um, sources of, of um, funds to support this initiative, um, but there are no scholarships at this time to support um, the program uh, directly from the program. Application requirements include um, a statement of interest. Um, of course, the application, your um, transcripts from your uh, undergraduate and graduate um, coursework um, and um, your application um, fee uh, as well. Um, the course experience happens basically on uh, Blackboard. It's the learning management system that we use. Um, we have recently been engaging our participants and our alumni and um, faculty with our Microsoft Teams uh, portal, which is a communication uh, vehicle uh, that Anna K. Rowe shared a little bit about earlier, where we're beginning to really amass uh, background information that on policy that might be supportive of everyone's interests, um, as well as to engage our participants and um, interested parties in information around education public policy. Um, so I'm going to ask you to um, share any questions that you may have about the program. Um, the program clearly has many, many benefits. It's certainly a stepping stone to um, lifelong learning um, to other uh, graduate programs if you seek those. Um, many of our um, participants have shared um, how the program continues to give back. Um, individuals have been able to transition into job opportunities and career opportunities as a result of it. Um, they are networking with many, many organizations and individuals uh, that they have come in contact with through the program. Um, so there are many, many benefits of the program and I, um, you know, hope that you will uh, consider joining our learning community. And so let me throw this open at this point and see if anyone has any particular questions uh, that they'd like to ask um, or concerns about the program. Um, I have a quick question about the course sequencing. Uh, you, you had mentioned that it's uh, one course at a time. Are the courses structured to be fully synchronous where there are set times uh, required for, uh, for each course, or are they structured in an asynchronous manner that allows for more flexible completion of requirements, et, et cetera? Could, could you speak to that for just a moment? Thank you, Jacob. I appreciate your question. Um, the courses are offered um, in an asynchronous way. Um, Patrick Molse, who we didn't have an opportunity to hear from this evening, is the instructional designer that has been helping us um, really from the inception of the program. Um, but I call him a creative genius because he helps our course content come alive. Um, even though we're not all seated in a classroom together. Um, and we often joke with one another that, you know, individuals can can be online at three in the morning, um, at midnight, in the middle of the afternoon, um, after work, they can work in their jammies. Um, as we've experienced during these virtual times, um, they can work with their um, small children and, and animals and dogs kind of running around, um, but it is, it's a, it's a, you know, an asynchronous experience um, and students can uh, very much be um, on automatic pilot in terms of when they prefer um, to be online. Um, that said, we do offer opportunities for cohort members to interface with one another um, through um, meet and greet types of events. Um, I know that Jason Jolly's, Dr. Jason Jolly's course 
um, offers an opportunity for people to interface um, with one another and have conversations. Um, we have been involved and engaged with using things like VoiceThread um, and opportunities for people to um, share ideas um, and talk through policy issues and things um, at the same time. Um, so there are ways to do that. And again, like I mentioned, um, we're going to be trying to capitalize on the um, opportunity that Microsoft Teams offers so that people can uh, communicate um, more in a more fluid way. So hopefully I've been able to answer your question. Yes, yes, you did fully. Thanks so much. Sure. Um, Kelly, are you still with us? Do you want to share a little bit about how that experience was for you um, operating with using the LMS system? And um, Jacob, I believe you're an Ohio University um, employee. Is that right? Uh, yes, that's correct. So if Kelly Davidson is still with us, I'm going to ask her, both she and Tom Stevenson um, have been um, our Ohio University employees, and so they can perhaps share a little bit about um, how they've been able to navigate that, um, if Kelly is still with us and online. Hey there. Um, so you wanted to know how, what, how I managed or? Sure. Sure. He he had the question about you know whether it was an, an asynchronous or synchronous process and what would be you know the possibilities and the ease of um, using or interfacing with the program and taking the courses um, basically when you're fully employed um, and you know like yourself um, employed at OU perhaps. Well, it was it was. It was challenging sometimes, but it wasn't because of my work schedule. Well, kind of. My my job was kind of crazy at, at different times of the year, as everyone's job is. Um, but with the coursework, I was doing that mostly in the evenings um, and sometimes on the weekend. So my free time was never free because I was doing coursework. Um, but it, you know, it was... I was able to balance it. You just have to um, kind of come up with a schedule for getting things done. But if if it's a crazy time of the semester, try to um, communicate with the professors if you're going to be behind or if something's going on with your technology or or if maybe you have to have an emergency procedure or something like that. Um, the professors are are really amazing, and if you just keep open lines of communication with them, they are willing to work with you. So I think you can manage it with without too much stress. Thank you, Kelly. Mm -hmm. uh, other questions? There are a few other guests on here, um, Tessa, Lindsay, um, Helen, do you all have any questions? I see uh, Janelle is online, welcome. Yes, I have a question. I just wanted to know, I have taken other online classes before and I wanted to know what are some of the expectations of the online classes offered at this university? <laughs> yeah, just like to that letters of recommendation aren't required? Is that the case? I was on the apply site uh, and it mentioned them. OK, um, wonderful. So we have two questions um, on the floor. One is whether letters of recommendation are required for the application. They are not, um, so you don't have to um, have references or letters of recommendation for your um, to go with your application. And then the other question um, specifically came um, regarding the expectations, the course expectations. Is that right? Um, I can restate my question since I wasn't able to finish. I was okay. asking what is the I want to know what the expectations were for the online classes. 
Um, I know at some other universities where I went to school online, they had weekly papers. There were also discussion questions and you also had to respond to your classmates. I just wanted to know, was that similar here as well or was something different expected from students? Thanks for your question. Um, I would say that it's a mix of what you talked about. Um, it depends on the course. Um, there are readings. Um, typically there are um, PowerPoints and lectures. Um, think, you know, we all have to keep reminding ourselves that these are one to two credit hour courses and so um, they're not as extensive as a full, say, three or four credit hour course would be. Um, and what faculty members do is they work to try to make sure that the content is consistent with the amount of time that each course is offered. So our courses are typically five weeks long, um, and so the content fits the five week window so that students are not um, spending um, all day long for five weeks working, but rather, um, as Kelly Davidson shared, are able to do those courses in the evenings or on weekends. Um, but I would say it's a really unique blend of some very innovative online um, learning activities, um, which include discussion boards, but also voice thread opportunities. Um, we have um, the um, lectures delivered through um, light board experiences. Um, there are actual online exercises that you're able to engage with um, to really reinforce the learning that you might be getting from either the lectures or perhaps the readings. Um, some faculty members do use case studies um, students have been involved in some role play activities. Um, it just really does vary, but um, the exercises and activities are very practical um, so that at the end of the day, students have some takeaways in their toolkit um, that, you know, help to um, support your policy work and endeavors and your advocacy work. Thank you. I also wanted to know, you said that there were the, there were lectures or discussions. Does that mean that there is going to be live instruction that we'll have to sign on at certain times? Um, no, um, all of the courses are, the lectures will be um, pre-recorded. Um, they may be uh, PowerPoints with uh, voice recordings and voiceovers, or there may be light, light board activity um, activities that are simulate a lecture experience. Um, and so there's a lot of online reading, um, online viewing of um, the learning experience as opposed to you listening to a lecture or logging on at any one particular time. Um, and so usually, it, you know, the, the content is offered in manageable bites. I'll say that. Dr. Trotman, are you still on? Yes, I am. Did um, you want to just share a little bit more about that experience in your courses? Sure. Um, I would like to reinforce what Dr. Robinson indicated. When we create and conceptualize our courses, we do it in a way that it is manageable, it is accessible, especially for those that are practitioners or those that are balancing multiple demands, work, and also pursuing um, other responsibilities, academic, and so forth. Um, in my courses, I utilize a mixed method assessment uh, strategies where students um, engage in voice thread activities. They also um, produce case studies on educational policy um, but I would say on average in my class, there is roughly about one assignment per week and there is also assigned reading. So I think that you will find that the coursework is very manageable. Thank you. Any other questions?
Lisa, did Lisa Dale, did you have anything to add as we uh, begin to wind down? Just a minute here. <laughs> Uh, nothing right now. Um, I think you guys have covered that a lot. If there are any questions, though, about tuition or about how the application works or registration, um, I'm glad to uh, answer any of those. You can let me know. Um, my if uh, Tasha can just put my email in the chat and you can feel free to reach out. Um, I can, uh, you know, give you any feedback about how Blackboard works if you haven't used that, that kind of thing. Um, but we're here to help you and help you navigate the program. Um, as I said, so you can you can uh, concentrate on the content and, and a good learning experience, and, and I'm always there if you've got questions. Excellent, thank you. And so, um, Lisa, if you would put your email address in the chat feature for people. Um, are there any final questions as we begin to wind down? Uh, I have a question uh, regarding the coursework. Yes, Billy Joe. Hi there. Um, I just uh, it kind of was stemmed from what Dr. Trotman just said. Uh, so this might just be a for example, perhaps, but Dr. Trotman had mentioned some case studies. And I'm wondering um, if anybody can tell me if a lot of those kinds of assignments are things where the students able to take some initiative in um, perhaps seeking out case studies or specific areas that are of very uh, close interest, or if we are going to be studying a lot of things, if you will, that are kind of going to be where we're all studying the same thing, if, if I worded that question well. Thanks for that question, Billy Joe. Um, I will tell you that the, the the program is designed to be a very personal experience for each student. Um, and so you, again, will identify specific policy issues and problems that you are interested in, and you're encouraged to work on those throughout um, the, the program. Um, the mechanics of the policy process, for example, policy analysis, you may be using a theory to apply to that, but how you go about delivering um, information for your assignments um, and the topics that you choose are your own uh, because we want you to end up with a product um, at the end of the program that's a, a usable product. Um, the case study opportunities are there for you to make um, some specific um, decisions um, and take it in certain directions. Um, students are asked to ferret out on many occasions their own resources. Um, and while we, um, you know, empower students, um, we offer some guidance, uh, but we do want you to be able to navigate the policy process as you would, um, you know, any particular other process as a professional in the field. Um, and take it in directions that you want to take it. Um, again, students take a lot of ownership with the artifacts and things that they prepare um, for the courses, for the end of course experience. Um, Dr. Trotman can certainly share some specific information about her case studies, but um, it's not a process where we are having pre prescribed kinds of things that students are going to have to do um, we want this to be tailored um, to your interests and your um, your directions. Anything else for the good of the order before we conclude um, and invite you to um, visit our website um, and information that's available. Um, the link is located on the slides. Um, we also encourage you to um, seek out um, the faculty members or the various team members if you are interested in hearing more information. Um, Tasha Attaway is going to close us out at this point. I think Tasha has um, one additional um, piece of information to share. 
I've been popping links and just a little bit of information in the chat as the program has progressed tonight. And one of the key things that I just wanted to mention is that if you want to reach any team member, you can send an email to the general EPPLC at ohio.edu email address, and I'll be sure that it reaches the correct person who can get you the best information. If I can't answer it myself, I know that I know who can. So that's one way that you can reach any of us. And I just had to share one thought that was um, that was kind of burned into my brain during the residency experience. And I was not a student, so basically I was watching the culmination of the year of coursework. Each student had their own policy passion that they were preparing to share and to pitch about. So there, there's that individualism there. But the, the quote that was really burned in my brain was from Shania Davis. And she said that if you're not at the table, you're on the table. And that's just something that is a thought that has come across my mind so many times that the importance of participating in the policy making practice cannot be overstated. Perfect way to end, absolutely. And so, you know, let's not have policy done to us, but actually let's get engaged and do policy, right? So I thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, please do uh, reach out to us if you've got other questions. Um, we encourage you to consider the program. Um, we're excited about it, um, and we think you will be too. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Welcome. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.